Welcome to the Toffee TV. It is the match preview. Southampton versus Everton. Saturday, 3 o'clock. And this represents, Baz, a good opportunity for the Toffees Another one. to get three points, doesn't it? Because, I mean, you know, you can pull all the negatives out and spin it any way you want, but Everton going to a team that's won no games this season in the Premier League, only one draw out of nine games, losing eight Premier League games. That's a game Everton should be winning. It's as simple as that. Yeah, 100% we should be winning it. Uh, there is always that fear factor that they haven't won a game yet and all of that stuff, but you've got to, you've got to compartmentalise that and sort of look at it from our perspective of going to a team that has come up, not won a game of football. Last away game we played against the team that had come up and not won a game of football. And we, we won the game, so it's got to be the same sort of mentality. Go there, exert, you know, the um, the game plan, get at them, and and take the three points, which are on offer for us. Yeah, because I, I mean, we say it all the time, don't we? There will be loads of, oh, they haven't won a game, so, you know, this one is, mm, you know... Here come Everton. Tricky, yeah. It's Everton time and all that. It's time for Everton, mm. but... You know, we've got to start looking at things through a little bit more of a positive prism. You know, not be pulled down into this idea once again that everything's a relegation scrap and that, you know, these teams are, are the same as us and all will be, you know... If you go there with a positive mindset, like we did against Ipswich, and, you know, even more games have passed into that one and... You like you said there. There's, if you put your game plan in with the experience of the plays we've got, because again when we played this, which looked at the play, two sets of sides, and I think even though Southampton have probably got a plays with a little bit more um, Premier League experience, the way their manager sets them up doesn't really. I mean, it gets the best out of their players, but but it's but it also shows that their players aren't good enough for that other side of the game yet. And and listen, I imagine as the games pass, they will start to realise that. I mean, they went to uh, the Etihad last week and a lot of people felt like it was they were gonna be destroyed. But you know, they got a they got a one nil one nil defeat and they could have they had a few chances themselves. Um but if you go there with your experience and you can execute that game plan, then we should be we, you should be winning these games. Everton are got far more quality than Southampton. Mm. It's just the way it is. They haven't spent tons of money. They've got championship players. They've got some young, good players that are trying to develop from there. Russell Martin's a good coach. They they play nice football. You saw that in the League Cup game at Goodison with, with what was pretty much a reserve mm. drive and he still knocked the ball around really well. But Everton Everton are better than people give them credit for and it is it, it is this self made um self-fulfilling prophecy that Everton are in a relegation battle. It's the, the stuff coming out of being the manager at times and out the club and out of some fans that we're, you know, we're, we're fighting relegation. It's nonsense. You know, without the points deductions last season, they'd have been mid-table. You know, there's no reason, again, I said it all along, Everton mm -hmm. should be between 11th and 14th comfortably this season. And this is the opportunity to do it. It'll be a tough game because every game in the Premier League is tough. And what we did really well at Ipswich was we got the first goal and we sort of built on that. Mm. That's still, Ipswich still had a couple at the moment, you know, Jack Clark at nil-nil and then obviously they had the penalty appeal. But Everton were able to ride those moments out and, and then put the ball in the net. And then on the day, Everton should have won by far more than the two goals they did win by. Mm. Southampton will give you chances, but they do dominate the ball and we'll have to make sure that we stay in shape. And then when we counter-attack, make sure we're ruthless enough on the counter and we do that then we can absolutely win the game Are Southampton doing what you thought they do this season you know in terms of where they are or did you expect a little bit more of them because uh, it's always hard to mm. gauge isn't it I said before the ball was kicked that the three promoters tried to do well to get 30 points because I just think it's nothing against them mm. it's just the chasm now that yeah. was money from the Premier League and the the championship yeah and so these teams are coming up it's, diff it's really difficult it's almost like you've got to have a three-year plan when you get promoted so mm -hmm. it's like come up take the money go down reinvest mm -hmm. it 
build that squad so when you come up the next time you can invest a lot yeah. more money in, in players to keep you there and occasionally of course there'll be one that survives it but we saw last season teams come up and go back down you know, Luton had a real real scrap mm. Burnley hundred odd points in the championship come up and couldn't you know won the second game or something in April mm. or whatever it was they really struggled to get to grips with it Luton seemed to have the best go but even them in the end were 26 yeah. points were woefully short you, you need to like you need to have a situation where where funny enough it is a situation mm. like that this season where a couple of the teams in the Premier League have tough starts mm. themselves and you don't let that gap get away from you so mm. while you're leaning to bed back into the Premier League or leaning as a, as a new team to bed into the Premier League those teams aren't getting away from you um, and and there is there is a case for that this season that there are a couple of you know down at the moment Wolves and 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 you know Palace were down there you know till he won and stuff so if you can bed in and get that experience but it it is tough isn't it and then when obviously once December comes and there's a lot of games and it stretches your squad and injuries and suspensions it becomes really really tough but do you think they'll regardless of what happens you think they'll continue just doing what they do with with Russell Martin and, and allow them to try and build the side because we we saw I think we saw this from Sheffield United last season where they, they sacked the manager and, and I just I don't know what they gained from that mm. because you've just said Dave you're going to do it over three years mm. and you're going to build a plan you know and have some kind of sustainability you have to be allowed to build and grow a bit like Fulham I've actually done mm. you know with Marco Silva going down and then bringing them you know you have to be able he to he didn't take them back no I know but I'm saying when mm. he, yeah, he yeah. brought them back I think that process was already in mm. place and, but I think for them I think for me I just I, I wouldn't understand uh, uh, the idea of letting someone take a team forward play football which we've already seen this season and when we played them in the cup you know they, they kept the ball really really mm -hmm. well and they do have that they do have um, a way of playing which mm -hmm. obviously runs through all the players and it, it feels like they just need to get obviously like we all do just better plays in a few key areas mm -hmm. to, 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 to take the team on a little mm -hmm. bit so do you think it'd be strange if they made a, a decision like that because it has been muted in the last couple of weeks yeah I think the difficulty is for us is obviously on the outside looking in you sort of look and go I can see what Russell Martin's doing he obviously brought them up mm. like you said I was impressed with them when they come to Goodison the way they knocked it down they just didn't have anything in the final third which a lot of us are scr you know, scratching around for that, that's where the real quality is and that's what mm. sort of divides the division up mostly doesn't it it's that quality at the top end of the pitch I can sit here and say leave him in place because what else are you going to do you're going to get rid of him bring a manager in, try to scrap and fight and mm. get enough points. And that might be what Southampton have budgeted for. Yeah. I don't know. They might have they might have budgeted no we're going all in on because we believe in what he's doing and it is that three year cycle mm. up, big pot of money, try and keep most of the team together, reinvest it, then the next time we come up we've got another big pot of money and then we can go and buy the bits that'll keep us up. I don't know. Um, he uh, he's not going to change his style. He's already said that. That's the way they play. That's what got them the success. I, yeah, I, I agree with the Sheffield United stuff. Heckenbottom was doing what he'd done. He hadn't really been given any money to do anything else. Yeah. He got Chris Wilder, like Chris Wilder, that he brought him back, but he, there was no real upturn for him. He done no. the odd game, but that was it. And then they've gone down, and obviously they're up near the top of the mm -hmm. championship again this season. But Paul he would Heckenbottom have done that probably. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he's off of Preston now, isn't he? Mm. So he's doing, you know, a difficult job there, but he's doing all right. So mm. I don't know whether they, whether they panic and go, yeah. nah, we're not going to sit here. Southampton fans will tell you what their expectations are. But but one point after nine games isn't great. No, it's not. And no, it's the not. results always dictate. Of course. Um, let's have a look at the team that faced Manchester City last week. Um. I think, I mean, when you look at the side in the forward areas, the likes of Camaracha, Fernandez, um, Dibbling, mm -hmm. a lot of young young talent there, mm -hmm. isn't there? And I've been impressed with Dib Dibbling every time I've seen him. Mm -hmm. He likes to, you know, he's got that old school way of playing. And um, 
Kyle Walker Peters is always a threat down the right, isn't mm-hmm. he? But there's, I certainly think in the attacking areas that you know there, there, there is young, youthful talent there mm-hmm. to to work with, to go forward with, and you know they've obviously got Lallana in there as that experienced Premier League player to just obviously gone back to his to his first club and just to give it that um, playing against his boy or club, yeah, uh, play, you know, just to give them that, uh, just to give them that, I don't know, experience, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they listen. They have. I like Harbour Bellasy. They brought in from City. Mm-hmm. Obviously, scored against us at Goodison, didn't he? In the cup, and scored the other night as well. I think in, against uh, Stoke. He's a good player. Really like him. Flynn Downs in midfield, former Swansea West Ham player. Really, really good. Tyler Dibbling. Every time you see him, impressed with him. So they have Cameron Arts is a little bit, you know, a little bit hot and cold. A mm. um, little bit unsure on him right now. He's a live wire, he can get the old goal. So they've, they've got the makings of, you know, good framework there. Lalana is the one who's experienced. I watched a bit of the game last week against City, and City were dominant for most of it, but Southampton were brave on the ball. He could like, take the ball, and it was the final pass or the decision making, which often does, is the difference in that Premier League level, mm-hmm. isn't it? So, um, yeah, they've, they've got, like I said, some good young players, but it's what you do with that. And yeah. Again, we're all we're all looking for that final third, the final third. Mm. That's where your real quality is, and Southampton are no different. Well, let's have a look at uh, Cameron Archer's numbers, who someone that we faced last season. Scored, yeah. Obviously, four Sheffield United. Mm-hmm. Uh, played yeah. nine, scored two, XG of 3.47, mm-hmm. zero assists, and big chances. Created. Zero as well. well. He's all over the pitch then. Mm. I mean, he's got pace. Mm. He's mobile. He's, you know, Devon's got a lot of goals. So for him to get two mm. in the nine games is. He's got a third of the goals, yeah. Yeah, so he, listen. He, he can, he, he's one of those players where he's young and he looked very promising when he was. You know, in those early formative years, and it's—I don't know if the move got going to Sheffield United might have been the right move for him, but he's gone to Southampton now, and he's just, <laughs> I just think he's a threat because I've already seen him score past Everton, and and then suddenly it just enters your head, doesn't it? But but you know, it's, they don't have a lot of goals and duty, so it so it is it is you know he for them he he'll he'll continue doing what he does for them, and there's some we have a centre forward that. Doesn't necessarily score a lot of goals from us, but it's how you, it's how you, uh, how they work within the, the frame of a mm. of a team. No, it is. Listen, they've got people. He's just one of another one, isn't it? They've got Adam Armstrong who scored the other mm. night, but he struggled at Premier League level. Ben Brayton Diaz, who obviously yeah. had a little loan spell at Sheffield United last season and did well because he had penalties in with the goals as well. So they, they've got lads who can. Occasionally score for them, yeah. Which means that they're, they're a threat. Arabo, Suleimane, yeah, you know, we've you know, they've even got Cornet on the bench. Mm, Joe, you both scored against us before. They've actually got it? more attacking talent on the bench than I think we have most games. Well, we have because we've got we've got a few injuries on me, but obviously when Chimitsi's back and and Breuer's back, that'll help us as well. But yeah, we've got to be mm. you've got to be wary of everyone in mm. the Premier League. You know, we faced Liam Delap the other week, and everyone was talking him up and yeah. He, he was really poor on the day, so you know we'd have, he'd have had one of his better days. Then we'd have we'd have had more problems there. So mm. you know, it's up to our defence to to make sure that Cameron Archer doesn't have a good day, or Joe Arriba mm. or Adam Armstrong or whoever. You know, Tyler Dibbling. We yeah. sure come on a good in the cup. Yeah, so, it does look, looks a good yeah, sound, doesn't it? Does. Let's uh, let's have a look at Ned's final ever. Match pack containing the voice that you want all want to hear. Re- Ned's real voice, thank God, yeah. for the final one. On the 2nd November 2024, Southampton and Everton go head to head in the Premier League. Out of 24 previous meetings, Southampton have won eight matches, while Everton won 10. Six matches between them have ended in a draw. Southampton is in very poor home form, while Everton are performing average at away. So far this season in the Premier League, Southampton have averaged 0.25 points per game at home matches, and Everton 1 points per game at away matches. Previous matches between Southampton and Everton have averaged 2.46 goals, while both teams have scored 58% of the time. Can Southampton turn this around? They have not won in the last five games coming into this, with one draw and four defeats. 
yeah it's not it's been a it's not been a yeah it's not, you know not had a great time down there we just seem to always do something stupid it, it was I mean first and foremost great to hear Ned's real boy mm, the St. Helens backs yeah, and yeah, that he puts that's, on that's, that's all so faith. that was good that's faith. Uh, yeah I mean obviously the last time he were in the Premier League we won 2-1 at St. Mary's mm. Connor Cody scored that yeah. day didn't he and Mac Neil. we had a big Dwight who hopefully will be available just mm. so we do have the attacking options yeah. uh, but Southampton of course won a good in that season as well yeah. so both teams won 2-1 so mm. tough one let's have a look at Everton's team from the game against Fulham last week what are you looking to change in that side then to get more out of it because nah. it's busy uh, last week uh, I bring Jared Brantwaite back in yeah uh, I think he has to come in now. I think there's an argument to play Mangala alongside yeah. the Drisagana gay. I know I've tried the Corey. He's had a bit of an issue, but I, he has trained. What would now. you do if Dwight McNeil isn't available? Well, if he isn't available, you've got two options, really. You've got two lads who's natural position is 10, mm-hmm. and that's either Jesper Lindstrom, who hasn't exactly pulled up any yeah. so far, or Illiman and Jay. But and Jai is doing a good job on the yeah, left, yeah. but Jack Harrison's better position of mm-hmm. the two is on the left. So the opportunity is there to throw Lindstrom on the right, Harrison on the left, yeah, and then yeah. Jai behind Dom. Or Harrison where he is, mm. Lindstrom and then Jai where he is. Um, but I think what the manager will do is play Decore. I think, man- <laughs> I, yes, I think yeah. you'd have oh, Jai, right. Harrison, you're Decore, right. and you'd have... Mangala, but there is a there is an opportunity mm. if Dwight McNeil isn't fully fit to to throw and Jai off Dom and see if we can get something going through the middle because it, it, when it works with McNeil, it's good. Yeah, just like the we'll miss Fulham. set. No matter what happens with if he doesn't play, we'd, we'd miss. I the think set. I think he'll play. I think he'll miss the set pieces, yeah. wouldn't we? Yeah. Yeah. If he, he is missed play. the set pieces, you're right. yeah, missed <laughs> now I think pieces. I think I think Dwight will play. So. It will, It'll be just probably one yeah. change from Fulham, and that will be for me will be Jared Brantley. Yeah, I mean it's still, yeah. I don't think Ashley Young has done anything really to come out the side just yet. I think a lot of people, you know, want Patterson to play, but at the same time, it's well, is this the right game for him to come back into the side? I'm not, I'm not sure. I think, I think you you want to settle your back four down as quickly as possible, and that means Brantley. I think Brantley should have played for me last week anyway, but. But um, yeah, and it will be interesting if McNeil's not available. You you are right. He will just play the Corey, and 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 stay stick with what he's got. Harrison mm-hmm. on the right and then Jay on the left because so that that's the less the the least moving parts, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And you know that's 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 the manager all over and. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I don't think he's going to start better. <laughs> you know, he, no. just, I don't. You know, say again, once again, certainly in an away game, and I don't think he's going to go to a four four two either. Because again, because it's an away game, so mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I think it'll be what it'll be. So we'll see. I think McNeil will play even before Everton put a message out, and it was like positive news on McNeil's injury front. Do you know what I mean? Like even the spin of it he's is like play. it's 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 not that bad. Mm-hmm. You know, good. So we need all he, our players fit. So and it, it's good that he's fit. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. And it might have, who knows, he might have trained all week and just not trained today. They trained, trained at Goodison, didn't he, today? That's why. And the cameras were there. So, mm. um, some physio work today. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. You'll be available. And, and hopefully, hopefully, he can uh, score there last time he played for yeah. us. So, hopefully, he can do it again. Anyway, let us know your thoughts in the comments on this one. Are you positive or are you just a little bit worried that we're going to, you know, but. Got to be positive. We've got to. We're gonna win. Got to start looking at these games. Going. We've got to win this because that for me, if we're the other way, then that takes the pressure off everybody. Because and then you lose. You go. Oh well, I expected us to lose because of this and that. Like no, we are better than that than they are. So we should be going down there and winning. And it and to say anything good that I think is taking pressure off the. There you go. There you go. You've heard it here first. Calvert Lewin brace. Literally heard it here first before. Before you see it with your own eyes, you've heard it in your face. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want more great videos, join us over on Toffee TV Premiere. The link is in the description. The QR code's coming up on the screen now. And this is the last video Ned will ever make for us. See you later.